Hello, this is T.D. Jakes, and I want to give you a personal invitation to join me on Mind, Body, and Soul on BET. Every Sunday night, I'm going to be looking for you. I'm so blessed to have this opportunity to join Madame Noir and to invite you. Hey, be there. I think that people who uh, tune in to watch Mind, Body, and Soul will not only get a different perspective on me, uh, because they see me out of the traditional uh, clergy perspective, but they also will get a different perspective on the people that I interview because I'm, I come from a different place and I bring that, that uniqueness of my role and my history to uh, the talk show industry. I, I know the kind of questions to ask that help people to really unmask who they are and really begin to deal with the issues that they have. When it, when it comes to uh, the talk show, we will interview a wide range of people uh, from LL Cool J to Marvin Sapp. Uh, but we did not exclude ordinary people because I think the most interesting people in the world are the people riding on the bus and in the subway, in the grocery store, and, and, and they also are objects of interest for us. Their marriages, their relationships, uh, what they feel, what they think. I'm thrilled to get an opportunity to do something different, out of the box, uh, something that makes you a little antsy. Uh, well, I've been ministering for 37 years and, and, and to be able to do something beyond that because I am a person, I have interest, I'm not just a pastor and a preacher and what you need me to be, I'm what God made me to be, I'm a person. And so this gives me an opportunity to be that person and not that personality, so that is very liberating. But it is a, a little nerve-wracking because you, you show a sense of yourself that people are not accustomed to seeing and you wonder what their reaction is going to be. Uh, so I think they're gonna enjoy it. Those types of reality shows that center around faith are not something that I would do, okay? Uh, first of all, as, as a clergyman, I think that what you project in front of the people is not about you, it's about Christ. When it becomes about you, to me, I've lost my focus. So uh, to, to show that I'm a person or to show that I have a car or I have a house or this or that, that's not what I'm called to do. I'm called to show you Christ. So personally for me, it wouldn't be something that I would do. And I haven't seen the show yet, so I have to wait to see what it really is for other people. But the reason that I have not done that sort of thing is because I want when I walk out on the pulpit for people to see Christ and not me. Well, the, in actuality, the stats are not that high in terms of increases amongst atheism, even though uh, in certain circles in the recent reports that I have seen suggest uh, that in some circles, not so much minorities, uh, there is some decline in people going to church. But for us to assume that that decline is totally based on uh, people being disenfranchised with faith excludes the fact that people can stream now. <laughs> that people can go on YouTube and get information now from the privacy of their home. And yes, there are people who are disappointed in clergy, but there are people who are disappointed in everything, uh, but they still go there, there to what they want to do at whatever time they want to do it in whatever way they want to receive it. And I think that the stats don't, uh, they, they don't hold weight if you don't add the fact that social media has changed the game for magazines, for churches, for everything. People receive information much much differently. For instance, in our ministry on Sunday, uh, there are about 12, 14,000 people who stream online every Sunday. Some of them are local, <laughs> you know, some of them are international, but I, I learned not to fight the way people choose to receive information. I learned to let people be people and just to provide, to feed them in whatever way they come, physically, YouTube, just feed my sheep. That's what he said, feed my lambs and I leave the rest of it up to God. I don't think the church is keeping women single. Uh, I, I think that uh, the church provides support for women in their singleness. Uh, I think the high level of young men being incarcerated is keeping women single. I think the teenage pregnancies are keeping women sing single. I think the bitterness and the pain that is ingested in the hearts of men, women who have been mistreated is keeping women single. Uh, <laughs> somehow the church becomes the catch-all for everything that goes wrong. It's the church's fault. You know, uh, I think it's more complicated than that. I think it's more about society and the trends that we're seeing in the world today. I think the most important lesson that I have ever learned is to believe in God and to believe in yourself and to not believe in your uh, haters. 
if you don't energize your haters and, and save that energy, not even to hate them or combat them, but to fuel what is in front of you, uh, you'd be surprised how far you can go if you're not distracted.